was from sense, Jeff though. Mason, for Jeff Mason of Reuters. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, a question on climate and energy. Can, can the world and, and others be confident that you will be able to follow or, or do, make good on the promises on climate change that you, will, that you have made when you're at Glasgow without a vote having taken place on your bill? And on the same topic, climate, some NGOs are already saying that the G20 commitments today were underwhelming. How do you respond to their criticism that the G20 response is not a good sign for COP26? I'll answer both questions. Number one, I believe we will pass my Build Back Better plan, and I believe we will pass uh, the infrastructure bill. Combined, they have $900 billion in climate resistance and dealing with uh, climate and resilience, and uh, it's the largest investment in the history of the world that's ever occurred, and it's going to pass, in my view. But we'll see. We'll see. You know, you've all believed it wouldn't happen from the very beginning to the moment I announced it, and you always seem amazed when it's alive again. Well, you may turn out to be right. Maybe it won't work. But I believe we'll see by the end of next week at home that it's passed. With regard to uh, um, the — and by the way, the infrastructure bill delivers an awful lot of things in terms of uh, everything from tax credits for electric vehicles to making sure we uh, are able to invest literally billions of dollars in everything from uh, — uh, highways, roads, bridges, public transit, airports, et cetera. But uh, we'll see. And with regard to the disappointment, the disappointment relates to the fact that Russia and, uh, and, uh, and uh, including uh, not only Russia but China basically didn't show up in terms of any commitments to deal with climate change. And there's a reason why people should be disappointed in that. Um, I, I, I found it disappointing myself. But what we did do, we passed a number of things here to end the, uh, the subsidization of coal. We made commitments here from across the board, all of us, in terms of what we're going to bring to uh, the G26. Uh, and, uh, and I think, you know, as that old bad, that old trite saying goes, the proof of the pudding will be in the eating. I think you're going to see we've made significant progress and uh, more has to be done. But uh, it's going to require us to uh, continue to focus on what China is not doing, what Russia is not doing, and what Saudi Arabia is not doing. One follow-up on energy, sir. Uh, you also met with energy consumers about supply. What steps are you considering taking if OPEC Plus does not raise supply? And do you see any irony in pushing them to increase oil production at the same time that you're going to COP26? to urge people to lower emissions? Well, on the surface, it seems like an irony. But the truth of the matter is, you've all known, everyone knows, that the idea we're going to be able to move to renewable energy overnight and not have, and from this moment on, not use oil or not use gas or not use hydrogen is just not rational. Certain things we can wipe out and we don't have to do. We should be moving immediately to get rid of, as they've adopted here, my proposal to end methane, to deal with a whole range of things. But it does, on the surface, seem inconsistent. But it's not at all inconsistent in that no one has anticipated that this year we'd be in a position, or even next year, that we're not going to use any more oil or gas, that we're not going to be engaged in any fossil fuels. We're going to stop subsidizing those fossil fuels. We're going to make significant changes. And it just makes the argument that we should move more rapidly to renewable energy to wind and solar and other means of, of, of energy. But the idea that we're going to end and somehow, but it does on the surface, I admit to you, we're going to COP to deal with renewable energy. And, and I'm saying, why are you guys cutting off oil and raising the price just to make it look harder for us? But it's, it's a legitimate question. I think, though, that if anybody thinks about it, no one ever thought that tomorrow, for example, it's going to take us uh, between now and 2030 to have half the vehicles in America are electric vehicles. Uh, so the idea we're not going to need gasoline for automobiles is just not realistic. But we will get to the point that by 2050 we have zero emissions. Um, uh, 